share some of this with uh, with the group. I like it, Eileen. It takes all kinds from bartenders to business executives, exactly. to chemical engineers to servers to I'm sure we have a little bit of everything. Yep. Uh, previous Hall of Fame um, catchers. What did we say last week? Switch hitting catchers. That's awesome. You know, takes everybody. So. Yep. We're excited about it. Can't wait. I think before we do that and get there, we have a quick video to play. So behind the scenes, wizard, press play and we will watch this. A year before we started Symmetry, we had a mattress business that we were forced to shut down. That left us in a lot of debt. I uh, worked in a home improvement and furnishing um, club. My role was really in marketing. I actually wanted to stay as far away from selling as possible. I ran my own construction company and I was in the construction industry for about nine years previous to that. Yeah, I actually worked for a captive insurance agency for about two years. My background was actually in chemical engineering. Uh, Cicely and I had actually been working in the restaurant business together. We'd been working together probably five years, five and a half years. So I was a server. I started when I was 13. 13 years old, bussing tables, uh, waited tables when I was old enough, bartending my way through college. Well, bartending my way through college, but ended up being 12 years later, I was still stuck behind that bar. One of the things that I continually felt was that I was underperforming. I really just had that, had that feeling. I knew that there was something inside that had yet to get outside. You know, I'd forgotten how to dream. I, I was at a point in my life where I was just going to work today because it's what I did yesterday. I just had gotten to a point where the money I was making was costing me too much. From what I knew about business and, and what I wanted out of my life, I, I definitely wanted a place that I could plant my flag and know that it was going to be safe. And it was going to be a strong place that I could build something really special. I wanted to make a great income, but most importantly, that I wanted to have the time with my family. I wanted to rekindle the relationships with my brothers. I wanted to spend a lot more time with my mom. And that's exactly what Symmetry gave me. Symmetry gave me everything. I, that's what I needed. I didn't need to impress anybody or figure, figure it out myself. I just needed to take their formula and just learn it. So when we joined Symmetry, um, I think we were revitalized. Um, for the first time in a long time, I had hope again. I had uh, a vision that I could see clearly of here's a roadmap and all I have to do is follow the system. Um, I think the thing that sets us apart is our leadership and our culture. When I found Symmetry, I found hope. I would say that I found a true team. I found freedom. I found family again. I found brotherhood. I found possibility. I found hope. I found my home. I found a home. When I found Symmetry, I found, I found my purpose. Mm, love it. Love that video. That is a good yeah. one, man. Absolutely loved it. It's these little chill bumps. I know. In the summertime, even. If I had any hair, I'd be standing up. <laughs> Casey, you're always cold. Where's your sweater? Where's my sweater? That's true. Um, all right. So I think the next step in this process is going to be me sharing my computer screen to go over some numbers. There's my button. Sometimes it's at the top of my screen. Sometimes it's at the bottom of my screen. It's just keeping me, keeping me honest, Spivey. All right. We, we intentionally change that up every week just, just to make sure you're on your toes. It's smart. Mm -hmm. Definitely is smart. All right, here we go. Boom. Top 10 new writers for the week. Number one, Charles Smith, 7,500 bucks. Way to go, Chuck. Nice. It may not go by Chuck. And if you don't like that name, I apologize and I won't do it again. Top 10 producer is Zach Little with 15K. Javon Spencer with 19K, Debbie and Adam Jr. with $20,193. Great week, Debbie and Adam. Top 10 producers in app count, Monique Alrawi and Cara DiNardo are tied with Jennifer Giovanni, all at the top with 20 applications. Three-way split, winner, tie, tie goes to the APV. 
I don't have it in front of me, so we're going to leave you guessing. Top med sup producers. Number one, Jennifer Ringstaff, $5,000 in premium on three apps. Way to go, Jennifer. Top five disability premium or disability income producers. Paul Sharp, 1820. Way to go. Nice. Number one, IUL producer for the week. Karen Young with 18,300 bucks. <laughs> Top five annuity producers. Debbie and Adam, Bryce Lindley, number one, Charles Smith with a $500,000 annuity. I love it. Top DFL producers, and it's about to get crazy. Real <laughs> crazy. Uh, Hopple, Hopel Jackson, $8,221. Way to go. We currently on DFL have... Oh, wait, here we go. Somebody <laughs> it is about to go crazy. Let's go debt-free live. <laughs> Come on, one trillion, baby. Yeah, <laughs> baby. There he is. He's crazy. <laughs> He, Guys, uh, if, if, if you weren't on his debt-free life uh, weekly call yesterday, you are missing a wonderful opportunity to educate yourself on the products and the way to protect families. But you're also missing out on a really good time. Yeah. I, I think bet. at this point, whenever Resma's calls are going off, we all stop what we're doing in the office and just go sit outside his door. Yeah, we know yeah. something's going on in there. Especially you, Casey, right <laughs> next door to him. I know. You know, um, 800 leads a week are being requested for debt-free life. If you missed the memo and you want some of those lie, those leads, then you might want to submit your GMR because starting probably this week, Todd, this week and next week, those leads are going to start trickling in and we're hearing amazing, amazing things. Same price for now as an A lead and the average premium being written off of them surpasses $3,600. And uh, right now there is a um, plus plus 30% close ratio that we're seeing with many more to still be contacted. So if you're the, the way these leads, leads are generated, guys, the, the data behind them absolutely is targeting the exact audience that Debt Free Life is built for. Yep. It is dwindled down to the fine specifics of how many pieces of consumer debt have a mortgage all the things that you look for in that market has already been pre-screened and those are the targets we're going for to generate leads yep so if you're pretty new on the phone and you're getting fired up about this i would encourage any any anyone you know in their first you know 90 to 120 days really anyone check up first you know check up with your leader make sure that you're not because the last thing we'd want to do is derail you with a more advanced level product right out of the gate when you haven't even maybe figured out how to go you know, help, help with the simple, um, you know, mortgage protection, life insurance type stuff. So, uh, but, you know, clear, clear it, understand, you know, what the next step is to kind of get into the boot camps for the DFL program. And then once you get certified to sell it, then, you know, leads, 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 leads. Just yeah, like man. Um, the, the lead flow that we're getting mixed with, and this is just early on, which by the way, we're confident that we can produce 10 times that that we that we're currently producing um that should increase company volume uh, on a submit level only starting with to the tune of about nine hundred thousand dollars a week okay so if you want in on that get in on that but like casey said if you're brand new and you don't even know what dfl is like here's what i would do i would i would ask people everybody i know Hey, do you want to, you know, get out of debt in like nine years or less and not have to pay any more money to it? All right. You need to get on this webinar that we've got coming up, which we'll share all the details with you soon. And yep. you need to follow back up with me. And if I'm that agent, I'm looking for someone in my direct hierarchy. And if you're a direct, you need to pinpoint three, four, five people within your hierarchy because all these sales are being made virtually. So it doesn't necessarily matter where they are. Reset, splits, everything Casey was talking about. That's the way to go. Learn how to do what we're doing, and then you can kind of get into that market. But we're super excited just about the, the amount of leads that we're going to be able to create with this one. And that's just one lead source that, uh, that we've created. Okay. There's plenty more and plenty more lead sources for, for different solutions coming behind that. It's exciting. Man, look at Ben and Amy Miller. 11 face shop recruits for the week. Well done. And Jacob Pogue. 28 direct recruits 
for the week. Got to get more licensed agents out there. Go rescue them. There are a lot of agents out there that don't even know that there are lead types, that there are buildable multi-levels of commission, that there are all of these different things that will allow them to go from making 40000 a year, working 50 hours a week, to making 40000 a month after a few years, working 30 hours a week, 40 hours a week, right? So maybe it'll take them three years. Right out of the gate, though, we're seeing licensed agents come in and you know, go out and become $10,000 $10, a week producers. So how are you targeting licensed agents? Talk to them. Find them. We'll help you with that with licensed recruiting packs coming too. Licensed recruits, Derek and Hemi. Derek Brock, Andrew Jimenez tied with four. Jacob Pogue also at the top with 11. Look at Jacob's new writers for the week in his direct. 11. Sarah Reineke with five. Nice. In the base, new riders. Sarah, buddy, is on fire. We're going to get Somebody to talk to one of her uh, up and coming leaders, too, here in just a minute, Miss Jamie and that organization. They're doing some special things, guys. Yeah, they are. Can't wait to dig into that here in a few minutes. All of our seasoned new agents for the week continue to kill it. Aldous Bent, Brittany Honeycutt, Chad Porter, DeAndre Walls, Frank Badamula, Hannah Jacobs, Jason Moultrie. Jeremy Sailing, Casey Hooks, Kimberly Robinson, Lucene Smith, Mark Leach, and Nicole Alexander. Nice. Well done and welcome. About to get fun for you guys. Top key leaders for the week. Number one, Eric Farron with 20, almost $22,000. Number one, agency owner for the week, Marty Valor. Well done. Just shot 50 grand for the week. Woo! Top agency directors, Ben and Amy Miller climbing up there with Larry and Ann Griffin, number one. Top regional agency director, Eileen Balmer, 160. Perfect timing. Although I think Eileen's been like dominating this board for a yeah. little bit. So I can't wait to hear how she's doing it. Top MVP for the week, George and Janet Matthews. They kind of hit that top and didn't slow down. And that's what I like to see. A lot of people hit the next level. AO, RAD, direct, equity partner. And what do we see? A little bit of a slip. I want you to celebrate the work that it took to get there. I just don't think you should do it for too long because we don't like seeing you slip backwards. Number one, SVP, Senior Vice President, Jimmy Spilled Dinner, edging out Kyle and Lisa Kimbrell. Well done. Top Executive Vice President, Mr. Carl Miller. I got a fun few texts from Carl recently. Look at Lynn Watkins, $616,000. Number one, Associate Partner. Well done. Number one senior partner, Mr. Easy Eddie Pritchett with 868,000 bucks and Marshall Whalen, 857,696. Back and forth they go. Went to Eddie this week. Top direct, Mr. Kevin Purdy, $240,000 in premium. Well done, KP. Well done. And top base shop, Edward Pritchett. 43,255 bucks, continuing to kill it in the base. Congratulations, everybody else that made the boards this week. Top bonuses given out for the month, 120 equity bonuses totaled out to $831,000. Hello. Marshall Whalen with 156 grand, Edward Pritchett with 130,000. Top uh, capital bonus winners, $64,000 in total. Chris Cook, number one on that board with Miranda Martin and, and uh, George and Janet following. And then the number one, Producer, 2880 bucks for the top producer's bonus. Over $75,000 paid out in that bonus. Total for the month, it's a record, 971406 bucks. Not too shabby. That's a record to break, buddy. How's it going? Bonus. Not too shabby. It's a bonus. Bonus. <laughs> Look at this again. Bonus. Watt <laughs> top three, Watkins, 83. Pritchett 130 and Waylon 156. Not too shabby, guys. Well done. Um, did you know that coaching yields on average a four to seven times return? Did you know that, Spivey? You probably did. Mm -hmm. We have a growing base of qualified coaches ready to guide you to the next level. We're subsidizing the cost. We've talked about this on a few calls recently. 
Um, but make sure that you're getting your leadership coaching in. You can email coaching at quility.com to begin your onboarding process. I think one of the most important things that any leader can do is learn how to be more of an effective leader. And that's exactly what this does. Leadership is all about, Casey, your level of influence. How much can you um, not only impact change, but I think encourage positive change, but encourage positivity, I guess, more importantly, through change. And that's a hard thing to do because we're in an ever-changing time in our industry. And, you know, if it's new solutions or products, or if it's new lead types, or if it's new methods and means of recruiting, or if it's new, everything seems new. The best leaders don't try to fight that. They say, this is extremely important to help me get to the next level of where I'm going. The worst leaders say, nah, I think I'm going to keep doing things the way I've always done them. We'll see how that works out for you, but I wouldn't really recommend it. It's the same thing with if it's, as an example, Brian Williamson, DFL. We agree that you shouldn't, as a brand spanking new agent, try to write DFL, but we also agree and understand that it is massively profitable for an agent to do DFL if they know how to do it exceptionally well. We know that digital leads are going to be much better if you call them as quickly as you possibly can. The quicker, the better right? They're not going to be as effective, neither or direct mail leads. If I sit on them for a week and start trying to call them on Friday or Saturday or Sunday, we're not mandating that you have to have these changes. We're just letting you know that the most successful people are going through these changes and they're actually embracing the changes, right? right? It's the same thing, Casey, with teaching people about a mindset around how to view leads or how to view, you know, any number of things you, you, you name it. And we can kind of talk about how you kind of talk through that. What do you think BW? Yeah, well, it was, it was great seeing Marty, uh, the agency of Valor on the leaderboard. He's working with one of our uh, outstanding qualified coaches right now. And, and I'll let him talk about the value that that's bringing and how that's impacting his business. But he's the second one today. I was uh, leading a call for Melissa Weigel and some of her leaders and, um, Someone messaged me privately, said, I just started coaching with Alan Spees, one of your qualified coaches, and it blew me away. So we're just, again, we're trying to make high, high value, expert level, excellent coaching available at a way uh, that, that just helps you level up in your business, right? We, it's connected to the more productive you can be, the more profitable you're going to be, the more you can grow in those leadership qualities. I mean, back to talking about your licensed recruits, right? I mean, speed to, to revenue, those are those people that are coming from the industry, man, being a new agent, being competent in your comp, uh, confident in your competence, uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't be looking for licensed recruits. We know that from our research, right? That we've just done is just getting that uh, pool of folks around you. So it's all, all stuff that, again, just, just adding value and getting results. And that's what matters. Yep. And for anyone fairly new, I just want to put a a quick little plug on on this, Uh, Brian, you know, we've always tried to never, you know, ask you guys to do anything we, we, you know, as the founders weren't willing to do, you know, Um, we we went out and sold the leads you guys, called the leads you guys call, set the appointments, book the sales, recruit, you know, lead people. And, And so the same thing applies to coaching, you know, this relationship, if anyone's new on the phone with Brian, came through Brandon, myself, and Brian, and a lot of our uh, executive team here, feeling like we need to invest more in ourselves from a coaching and leadership development standpoint. And so this relationship we have with Brian was because he was coaching us. And we were paying Brian to coach us uh, internally to be better leaders, to be more productive behind the scenes in the office. And so, um, Man, so much of what we've learned in the last few years that has allowed the company to elevate to the place it is, is because of coaching and, and coaching with guys like Brian and some of the other coaches that he's bringing on. And so I just, you know, I think sometimes people, especially agency owners or, or key leaders or people that are wanting to start building, have trouble with that leadership part of things because maybe they're coming from a spot where, you know, they were a manager and they had employees kind of that they were they were managing here. We're leading a volunteer army and the same principles that you might've used in that lower level type of leadership where it was more positional is drastically different than the type of leadership you need to have here to actually have success. Because what will happen is if you try to do that, you're just going to blow people out. 
Because we see that a lot. Style. We see that a lot. We see it a lot, and it, it causes friction. And so you have to understand where your blind spots are. And having someone to hold up a mirror to you a little bit on the outside, kind of like a Brian Williamson or some of these other guys we're talking about, allows you to go, okay, that's a blind spot. I get it. I see why I'm rubbing people the wrong way. Maybe I'm getting too much relational type friction in, in trying to grow my business. Because, and, and not only will it be better for your business, it'll be better for your, your, your overall psyche and your mindset because that is not fun when you have a bunch of people upset there's a lot of relationship kind of friction that's not a fun spot to be either that's a very draining world to live in and we don't want that for anyone either so just a little plug for this guys lean into this stuff i think it makes makes people's jobs so much more difficult i think you said it perfectly there's one rule of thumb that we always want builders and managers to kind of live by uh and maybe it's a couple of rules of thumb all under the same hand which is if if Many of you that would that are struggling with this would treat your downlines like you treat your uplines or like you treat Casey and me specifically or Brian Williams. Yeah. Your lives would be so much easier because most everyone wants to serve. But when they start managing based exactly on what you said, Casey, on all they know about management or leadership, yeah. which is how they've been how they've been shown that their entire lives. Yeah. Um, it gets really difficult. And so, you know, again, same, similar rule, same hand is kind is clear. We're not saying you don't have to um, deal with issues and have fierce conversations, but you do that in a very kind way. Yeah. Right. And setting expectations creates clarity and kind is clear or clear is kind. Mm-hmm. Right. Just be likable is what I want most people to try to understand. And that's not easy for everyone. I get it. But, you know, it goes back to a saying we've been, we've been hearing for a long time, Casey. Would you rather be right or would you rather be rich? Yep. You know, and so, so many people want to dig their heels in and be right and think that the way that they do it is the way to do it, the best way to do it. Okay be willing to change and then lead others through change and try to go into most situations with an understanding that I don't know what I think I know. Yeah. And I am probably at least partially wrong in some of these things. And and even not to digress too much, because this is just an announcement we're talking about here, but there's a vulnerability that people are so afraid of, of exercising in leadership but I'm telling you, when your leader says, I don't have all the answers, you know, I may be wrong about this or, or, or can take uh, ownership of maybe um, something they've created in the relationship that has gone awry. Um, yeah. you, you know, just some vulnerability is one of the most attractive things a leader can do. If you've ever, ha- ever had some, anyone around you be vulnerable, I promise you, if you think about that situation, you've probably perked up and said, you know, that, that's an attractive quality. Um, yeah. so there's just things like that around leadership and, 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 and stuff that you, you know, it's, it's one thing just to hear it, us talk about it for a second. It's another thing to actually get coaching on how to, how do you actually exercise this? It was Go such a good, it was such a good point that you just said, and I, I want to give everyone a challenge this week, because I think it's one of the most important things that you can do. I want, I want you to kind of clear up a relationship in exactly the way that Casey just talked about doing it. Okay. And maybe that's with an upline. Maybe that's with a downline. Maybe that's with a spouse, a partner, a family member, a friend, whatever. And I just want you to approach it like this. Hey, Casey, you got a second? Man, I just, I just want to apologize that I think I may have handled this past situation the wrong way. And uh, if it's okay with you, man, I'd like to just start over and let you know that my intention was not to create friction between us. Matter of fact, I want the exact opposite. Would it be okay with you if we if we talk about that for a second? Absolutely, man. Yep. I mean, how easy is that? Yep. You will feel so much better. You will oh, sleep so great. much better, and your relationships will be ten times better. Even if, and possibly even especially if, you feel like you're not the one in the wrong. Yep. That's called being the bigger person, and maybe you weren't. Or maybe you have a blind spot. That's what you were talking about. (laughs) Uncover the blind spots. Well done.
All right. Upcoming events. We have Columbus Life tomorrow. We've got Gary Keith, the final expense webinar tomorrow. Monday, we got like one of the best ever, Jimmy Spill Dinner hosting the training call. And then obviously Tuesday, we got Debt Free L I V I N by Mr. Mike Resma. Jump on if you haven't. Right. Agent Spotlight, Mr. Spivey. Super yeah, man. Star. It's fired up about this one, Miss Jamie. How are you doing? Oh, you muted. Superstar Susie. Oh, I, just said, I just said the best thing, too, and I was muted. <laughs> I knew it. Sorry, I knew you were going to say something really kind to me, and I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. Thanks for having me. And welcome. Welcome. We feel privileged and honored. We, uh, we were so um, excited last month to get to spend a little bit of time on the agency owner, Hob Novin. Uh, breakout call with your upline and let me just tell you uh, what Sarah spoke to us about you and the team in general and the energy and just your kind heart and everything that you've brought to this organization we owe you a ton of gratitude for what you've done in such a short amount of time I appreciate that I appreciate that it's been a wild ride for the last 12 months yes well uh, for those of you that are um, just meeting Jamie for the first time, she uh, comes to us um, and in less than 12 months broke out as an agency owner. Uh, Sarah writes that she's had no less than 10 to 12 writers a month. She's even had a 36K month. All this while raising four kids, including four kids. a newborn? Four kids. One of them I actually had in September of 2020. So... First of all, let's start there. Where do you find the time? <laughs> oh, that's funny. So yeah, in December of 2019, I, I didn't know about symmetry yet. And I was bored. I was bored in my business. And I thought, let's have a baby. My husband was like, no, let's not have a baby. Uh, but I got what I wanted. And, and we were pregnant very quickly thereafter. And Charlie was born in September of 2020. I was um, just starting to recruit then. And get through the learning curve and start to figure this thing out and had a baby. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a lot to, to, to keep up with. And you said you'd kind of gotten bored in your former business and former career. What, what were you doing? So I previously worked as a nurse. Uh, I, I didn't hear Brandon say that uh, nursing people had come from that industry, but I worked for 12 years in the cardiac intensive care unit uh, for uh, Boston Children's Hospital. So babies born with or who had acquired heart disease, that was my thing. And I did that for, for about 12 years. And then I landed in a network marketing business, which I built that up, hit the top of the company there, fell in love with it. Uh, and I did not know that I had another, another year in me. Uh, this company found me by way of Sarah Reinecke giving me a phone call and, and saying, hey, I found this new thing. I think we should do it. I've been asking a lot of questions and doing a lot of research. And I'm like, yeah, I'm in, I'm in. So I didn't do any research at all. I just suffer from what's called fear of missing out. And I knew Sarah had been successful previously and I knew she beat Jacob Pogue down for two weeks, probably every single day asking a bunch of questions. And I said, I'm, I'm in with you. So I was her running buddy from the start. Uh, and you've made such an impact. Sarah sent in a very sweet email that I'll share with you uh, after the call and just talks about your heart, the love that you have for not only um, your upline, but your colleagues, your clients, you know, cross line, people in other organizations that just comment. What an amazing friend, wife, mom, agency owner you are and the leadership that you show. So I just want you to know how special you are to those in your organization and all of us. If I'm new to this call and I'm seeing awesome Jamie and seeing what she accomplished in 12 short months, Tell me, what, what is the secret? What's the, what's the best advice you can give me if I'm a brand new agent? Yeah, I would say get out there and make a mess. When I, when I first started here, and, and again, I didn't say this from the beginning, I'm part of Sarah Reinecke, Jacob Pogue, Marshall Leland hierarchy, and super grateful to be here. Um, but I would tell people go out there and make a mess. I mean, I blindly followed Sarah and she was new at the same time. And we just did exactly what Jacob Pogue told us to do. Go get a license here. Okay, cool, we'll do that. Get your GMR set up. Okay, we'll do that. We had with no previous experience in this industry. So we just kind of blind leading the blind and figured it out and made a bunch of messes and cleaned it up along the way. So that's what I would say to do. Yeah, that's uh, 
So true. It's what Danny Young told me for so many weeks. And it's funny because I resisted the first couple of weeks. I was so scared to go make that mess. I was so scared to go into that first home or go into that first appointment. And turns out, as usual, Danny was right. And once I went into my first home and made a mess, I learned so much. And I also realized it wasn't as big of a mess as I thought it was going to be. I had so much support and so many people that I could call to make sure I got the client protected in the proper manner. And that's it. You just got to get up there and start the activity. So with, yeah. with the advice you've shared there, Jamie, what's what's next for your agency? So you've had so much success in such a short amount of time. What's I your know. plans? What's your goals? Where are you going next? We're just going to keep doing enough of the right things and, and see what happens. But we just broke out as agency owner uh, last month. And, and now it's, it's let's have some other people get there, too. So Sarah and I love our agency. We are so proud of the culture we created, which is just an, an offspring of the culture that you guys have here as a company. Um, we're just bringing as many people along with us on this ride as we can. And I think it's such a good lesson for everybody out there too, that just from a distance watching you and Sarah on Facebook, it seems like every time you post something, it's the greatest time ever. You're always <laughs> laughing, smiling, crying together. It just seems like a party. And it always seems like, it's one of those posts that you just see and you're like, man, I, I, it looks like they're having a good time. I wish I was there with them. And that power of association is so important to this business and the way we recruit and build our relationships. And uh, I just want to say thank you to Jamie and thank you to Sarah and thank you to everybody in the POG organization for all the success that you're having and the impact that you're making on so many others in such a short time. Is truly phenomenal. So, so good. Thanks for joining us today, Jamie. Appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Excited to meet you next week at the AO Academy. Yeah, yes. it's good. Looking forward to that. And Jamie, that love that tip. Just go out and get get you know get messy. You know that's uh man that's such a simple way to say it, but it it there's so much to unpack in that for people. I think because we try to come in and you know, especially when you're new, you feel like you have so much to learn and so much to do and so much to organize. And it's like, if you just go back to the simplicity of what actually drives revenue in the business to start with, because chances are when you're looking for something new, uh, that's what you need is you need to figure out how do I put money in my bank account? That really doesn't change. Like, and that's why I'm always a big fan of that, that two box, the two boxes. You know, have that whiteboard in your office, have two boxes, two big square boxes on it. And the only thing that fits in the box is a number. And in the left box, that number is the amount of appointments I need for the week. Nothing else matters. You know, how organized your car or your filing cabinet, or your office is, doesn't matter. You know, nothing matters except the amount of appointments you put in that box. And I like a box because the only thing that can fit in that box is a number. I can't put an excuse in the box. I can't say, well, I didn't, you know, it's just a simple number that I have to hit. I, what is your, what is your weekly number that you're trying to hit from an appointment count standpoint? We're working for at least 15 a week, 15 to 20. Virtual are you virtual? Or are you? I have done one in-person appointment ever. Okay. So you're, you're pretty much, you're pretty much hundred percent virtual and you want to set a minimum of 15 appointments. And I've heard some people say 20, 25, 30, I've heard some people say 15, I guess it just matters on what your, you know, what your math problem is, what, what's your monthly nut that you kind of need to crack in order to pay your bills and have some surplus to invest in the business. The box next to it, at least in my office was how many people do I want to interview? How many Jamie's do I want to talk to a week? And for me, that number was also 20, you know? So I had 15 in the first box. I had 20 in the second box. If I fill those boxes every single week, I promise you, I will win. You will win if you fill those boxes every single week. Everything else will start to take care of itself. You'll start to figure out what products you need to sell to who, you know? You'll start to figure out how to recruit better because you're talking to enough people. Everything takes care of itself and money starts to flow fill the two boxes. And that's, that's, it sounds like what, what you're doing. How many interviews a week roughly are you putting in or what's your goal? Uh, my goal is, is double digit completed packets in a month. Yep. Um, but I would say, I heard Brandon talk on the last call about, you know, the lead sources and what works and it's whatever source you're going to use. I mean, Facebook yep. has been a huge resource in terms of recruiting for both Sarah and I, we didn't even come in here thinking we were going to do that. Yep. So, that's why we look excited on Facebook. We, we were always excited when we first came in here. We didn't even know what we were doing yet, but people are attracted to excitement. 
So yep. get them excited and get them interested and have them asking questions of what are you, what are you doing? Man, you got to be part of this. It's awesome. Love that. Love having that goal of like how many packets I need back. The beauty of having the two boxes is it's more about, you know, the saying is you can't manage results. All you can really kind of do is manage the activity that yields the results. Appointments yield my, uh, my sales results. Interviews yield my packet result, my contract. How many people do I actually have onboarding into the system? And so those two boxes are more about me managing the most important activity on a weekly basis to yield the results that I need. Um, that's going to fall out of the box, right? But um, yeah, love, love where your mindset's at. And that's, that's a, such a great way to approach. I'm just going to go out and I'm going to kind of jump off the cliff and build my wings on the way down. Um, so that's, that's the way we did it. Awesome. Appreciate that, you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. So good from a from a leadership standpoint too, Jamie. Great to see you. I'm looking forward to the time next week as well. I loved what you said about not only making a mess, but your responsiveness mm -hmm. to direction. When we teach the square next week, we're going to talk about directive leadership, right? And secure, confident, humble leaders actually crave direction. And it really sounded, and I'm not surprised working with uh, with Jacob and Sarah together uh, back then is like man, your willingness to take that direction and just say, tell me exactly what to do. How do I win here? Man, if we could multiply that, and especially with the new folks here, because you recognize you don't know what you don't know. And that's normal when you head into a new sector, a new industry, and your willingness to do that is huge competitive advantage. And if uh, we'd have more of that kind of responsiveness and humility, we'd have more of the kind of results you're getting. So really, really right. great. Good stuff. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, Eileen, I think that's it, right, Spivey? We got any more announcements or anything we need to hit? No. Um, I will just say, uh, Eileen um, and team, everyone out there in conference call in listening, um, another fantastic week. And it sounds like we're gonna have another big week this week. Just wanna encourage everyone to continue, please, um, leaning into this thing right now. We are in a season uh, in this company right now. And when I say season, I mean, uh, really, it, fe it feels like it's been all year, maybe even a little bit of last year, where we are, um, you know, in some new waters and some new territory together. And it, they're very exciting waters, but they're different waters, you know. Um, it's kind of uh, the, the area of the company where we're kind of trying to take this thing to the next level. And... Um, you know, there's a lot, lot of things moving around behind the scenes in a very good way, in a very good direction. Uh, and we just, you know, the word of the year when we kicked off uh, this, this year was invest. And the, the, what we were trying to do with that, the word of the year is to, to set everyone's focus on really investing in your business like you've never invested before. You know, so I'm going to work more leads than I've ever worked. I'm going to book more appointments than I've ever worked. I'm going to recruit more people than I've ever recruited. I'm going to dig into myself and, and I'm going to invest in myself from a leadership development more than I ever have before to gear up for what's coming and to really be in a spot where you're taking full advantage of the opportunity that's going to be ahead of this company in the next couple of years. And that table is being set right now behind the scenes every single day. Um, in fact, Brandon had to jump off to go into another meeting. So Brandon, myself, Pope, everyone behind the scenes here, our tongues are absolutely hanging out. I hope everyone out there, and I think we can tell it by production, is that uh, your tongues are also hanging out and it's a season. And I'm just asking everyone to keep pressing, keep pressing. It, it's, uh, it, it's a little bit out of our natural flow for the last 12 years where we haven't really applied a ton of pressure to the field, um, but we're just trying to align ourselves from an investment standpoint right now between the investments we're all making behind the scenes, both financially and from an energy standpoint to match with you guys. And if we can ma marry those two things together, everything we're doing behind the scenes and everything you guys are doing together out in the field, it's going to pop big time. Uh, and like yeah. I said, there's just a lot of opportunity ahead of us as a company. So get ready for it. It's going to be fun. I wish I could share too, Casey, just seeing the excitement on the inside and I'm, I'm an agent out there going, you know, I'd, I'd love to see this company go to the next level. You know, what does it really mean for me? And what Casey's saying is, guys, we've got so much positive attention on us right now. 
we are truly in a spot where we're looking to be um, with the right partner that wants to invest, that sees our vision, that wants to execute on everything that our founders are laying out. And trust me, every bit of these meetings are all about the founders talking about every agent in this company and how we make you more successful. Yep. And it is lighting up the investment banking world. We're yep. seeing so many people get excited about the heart and actually having a real culture behind a company yeah. that is generating so much wealth for its agents and protecting so many clients. So our activity right now, really, what does that mean for you? The more production we all put in, the more sales, the more we continue to show these growth trends, puts us in the best position possible to where we can be as selective as we want yep. to make sure that we're getting the right kind of investments yep. that are really going to put dollars behind the programs and the technology it's going to make it easier for you to do your job and easier for you to recruit and easier for you to become the next Edward Pritchett that much faster. Yep. So please listen to Casey when he says this guy, he's, he's, yep. he's so humble over there. That's why we love him, but <laughs> there's a lot of incentive for all of us right now to push there is. because this, this, this first wave of the taking the next step as a company is critical and we want to be in the best spot that we possibly can be to put us in alignment with the best resources possible. So well said, very well said, Spivey. Appreciate that, man. Yeah. And, and I will just also say we're going to make massive investments into this thing. As we've shared with you guys, we already have been, but there's going to be millions and millions of dollars invested over the next 18 months to 24 months into this platform. Uh, a lot of it having to do with technology and leads. And um, I'm just going to tell you guys, this company is going to look drastically different from a platform, from a technology platform standpoint in the way you as an agent approach this business and no one else in the industry is focusing on it. That's, what's, we're, we're, that's what we're so excited about. And I'll just, just the value proposition that you guys are going to be able to sell. And it's already good. I just can't imagine how good it's going to be three months, six months, 10 months, as we start developing this stuff and it starts being kind of put into the water stream. It's going to be, it's just going to be a killer thing for everyone. So just lean into it. it you know, business is a lot about timing, you know, and if, and if you're, if you're going to be in a position to kind of capitalize on what, what's going to be here in a year, let's say, now's the time to start. Don't wait for a year when we roll all of this out and it's like, well, it's time to start building. It's time to start selling. It's right now. It's a pipeline type business and you have to start early. And so start leaning into it. And that's why I think um, as a little segue here, we should get into uh, Eileen's, uh, Eileen's call because um, Eileen, you are, uh, you are one of the uh, newer um, people in the ranks to get to the top of the company, right? And so I think I don't, I know we got, I know we got um, a special guest on today with you, but I, I also want, I hope, I hope you can, can share with us a little bit too on some of your journey and some of the things you've learned in the process. But um, how long ago did you uh, join us, Eileen? Um, it was seven years ago in May. Seven so years ago. a little over seven years. And um, what, uh, what were you doing right before this? Right before it, I was doing AFLAC. I did AFLAC for about six to nine months, yeah. but I was searching for my insurance home. I had been through um, some other career, other career moves, but I had started my career out at insurance um, with a captive company, a pretty large captive company and gotten away from it. And uh, some things in my life kind of led me to the point where I needed to get myself an order for retirement. Yeah. And I knew the insurance industry was a place to go. I just had to find the right home. Find the right and, home. Uh, Isn't it crazy how, cause Brandon started with Aflac, they recruit hundreds of thousands of agents a year. They yeah. recruit a lot of agents. And when you look at the opportunity set that a new agent has with Aflac, and I'm not saying you can't make money there. I mean, there's obviously plenty of agents making money there, but there are a lot of companies like that that recruit even way more than we do. And um, some of that to me is just a timing thing. Aflac's been around for a long time, right? And they've developed a certain amount of kind of a foundation and a, and a, and a size 
uh, over the years. But when you look at the actual opportunity, hands down, Eileen, what was your experience like when you started there? And what was your experience like when you started here from an opportunity standpoint, like your ability to actually go out and put money in the bank? That was tough. Um, it's, it's a really yeah. long sales cycle. Yeah. You know, here, I literally wrote my first applications with Symmetry less than 24 hours after I got my, my agent yeah. number um, with yeah. Symmetry, not, not with the carriers. They were paper yeah. wraps and the whole nine yards. Um, with, with Aflac, I mean, it took forever. I mean, they were touting me as doing great and, you know, tossing me ducks and, and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And I was like, I haven't had hardly any money put in my account. So I knew pretty quickly that I was too old for that game, man. Um, Cause it takes a lot of prospecting yeah. and, you know, if anyone is new here, you know, prospecting will kill you. It's, mm. it's a young man's game. And the, the great platform that we have here with the lead program and, and you guys, your experience that you have to get the right leads in our agents hands is yep. just hands down one of the, the most attractive parts of, of this business model. And there's so many great things, but that yep. lead program is what gets us all started. It gets you in the door, right? Um, what about, uh, so how long did it take you when you started with us? And then I just want to turn over to y'all because I know we're, we're kind of encroaching on the, 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 the 2.30 time to stop. But what, um, what was your, you know, how long did it take you to kind of come in and get to the point where you felt like you were 80 to 100,000 a year? Um, mission range? Well, probably about three months. I kind of knew personal yep. production wise that, you know, I was on that track. I mean, I wasn't a great producer like some that we see now, yep. um, but I was, you know, I could hold my own, Enough. Um, yep. you know, and I just quickly followed right into Jacob's footsteps, yep. you know, on direct to Jacob Pogue and he was reaching his stride on, on recruiting. And I just, you know, we just locked okay. arms and I followed behind him, um, just kind of mirroring exactly what he was doing. And so roughly how many producers do you have on a monthly basis now? 200 and, well, unique writers, um, you know, we're running around 60, 70. 60, 70, and how much production on a monthly basis? Um, five to 600,000. And um, income's a little better than 80 to 100 now, I guess? A little bit. <laughs> Well done. <laughs> well done, Eileen. You're, ex you're a perfect example of the, type, the, the person we're looking for. You know, you've, you, you came in, you listened, you plugged in, you went to work, and, you know, look where you are. Yeah. Pretty awesome. It's, it's a great Constantly great hear about that. your your kindness and love and your leadership and your ability to go through obstacles and challenges on your journey and bounce back and have the have the right attitude the whole time and, and, and just really means a lot to us in the home office. And I know your special guest, Gil, too. Um, just want to make sure he knows how much we appreciate him. He's one of those guys that does not miss an opportunity to reach out and yep. thank the home office for something that made his life easier in the field or just to remind us that he appreciates our efforts and what we're trying to accomplish to make even the future um, easier for our agents. So just a great example of two individuals that have a tremendous attitude that show gratitude and appreciation. And um, obviously it shows in the business numbers as well. So can't wait to hear from Gil, Eileen, you guys take it away and uh, looking forward to hearing what you got. All right. Thank you so much. We, we truly appreciate you. And, and, you know, everyone, my name is Eileen Balmer. I am direct to Symmetry Financial Group and the great Jacob Pogue in the Marshall Wayland hierarchy. And I'm so proud and so grateful to be here and, and to be you know, with this great group of people, not only in my own hierarchy, but, but the entire company. And you know, before I introduce um, our, our guests, I just wanna take a brief moment um, since I, this is the first time I've been on the national platform since I made 120, but I really wanted to um, just really let everyone else know in my whole master um, agency, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize not only my first running buddy, Scott Mank, 
but his entire direct agency. You know, I had the honor of working directly with a lot of these folks, but a, a vast majority of them, I haven't even had the pleasure of doing that. But I wanted to just recognize you guys and, and your leadership and let you know that I am keenly aware of the great contribution that, that the Mink entire agency, you know, had made on me and, and my master agency. You know, mere words just don't justify or, or do the justice to you guys that, that you all deserve. But I wanted to, to give a quick shout out to Chris Menifee, Johnny Cox, Deanne Cox, Jerry Choate, John Paul Vetter, Sherry Gastineau, Stella Dinwiddie, and all of your agents, every single one of you. And of course, Scott Mank. You know, we could not have done this. The Balmer Master Agency could have not gotten to 120 without all of you. And I wanted to thank you all publicly to all of Symmetry Land. And just let you know, I'm honored that every single one of you, I consider a business partner and I can't adequately tell you, you know, how grateful I am for all of that. But I just wanted to take this opportunity to say that. So let me introduce our topic here. You know, I'm gonna introduce what, what we kind of uh, refer to as a recovering corporate executive. You know, one of the many things that makes Symmetry such a fantastic business model and is our corporate culture and our diversity. Um, we're an inclusive culture. We come from a wide variety of walks of life, career backgrounds, family statuses. You know, those of us that have been here for any length of time have heard a lot of these symmetry stories. And a lot of them are, are you know, in some ways similar to my own. You know, we came here broken, broken. You know, we had to burn the ship. You know, I don't have a plan B. You know, symmetry is my final stop in the quest for, you know, personal and career success. You know, and these stories are, are so inspiring and they're motivational and, and we're all moved by the sense that, hey, if he can do it or she can do it, you know, under those circumstances, I can do it too. But symmetry is a fantastic model for everyone. You know, not just those who had some sort of hiccup in their, their career or, you know, are relatable in that regard, but there's those of us who chose this model, not as a last resort, but at, as his or her chosen career path between a lot of different options. You know, we've got agency owners, if you were on the builder's call, you know, Andrew Jimenez, he was in his 20s, very early 20s. Um, you know, when he came here, when he broke out as an agency owner, he had his entire career ahead of him. He could have done whatever he wants, but he came here not because this was his last chance or, you know, man, if I don't make this work, I'm just, you know, I don't want to put a label on it, but I'm, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to reach the success that I want to reach. But he's here because he, he plugged into the system and, and discovered what a great, great um, opportunity we have. And then we've got those like, like my guest today. Um, Gil Griego had a lot of success in corporate America. And, and a lot of us amongst our myths are probably in that boat where they're like, well, you know, I'm not broke. I'm not broken. Um, I'm just looking for something different. You know, you know, a lot of people aren't here out of desperation, but out of a desire just to change their course. Um, perhaps something was missing in, in their lives or in their career. And sometimes it's not just money or, or even time. It, it's something else, maybe something deeper within them. So, you know, like I said, you know, we are not all necessarily a group of misfits, if you will. I hope not. And I don't think so. Um, so let's explore a little bit with Gil what it was like for, for him to, you know, spend three decades just going up the corporate ladder and, and making the decision that maybe he wanted something different. And, and just kind of look from his point of view, his approach to this great model and, and what changes that he's had to, to go through um, throughout this symmetry um, journey. So the, the gentleman we're gonna hear from, his name is Gil Griego. He is an agency owner. Gil came to Symmetry in July of 2018. 
he he broke out as an agency owner in July of 2020. And, and just let me say to everyone out there, anyone, anyone who broke out as an agency owner, and I know there's more than just Gil in 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 2020 during a global pandemic, you guys all deserve a standing ovation. And the first time we're here in person, we're gonna we're gonna give it to you because you know that is a difficult accomplishment, and I cannot stress it enough. But back to Gil. Gil is a top producer. He earned the Impact Player Award from Symmetry in 2020. He was the top IUL producer in the Pogue Master Agency for 2020. Um, he was Impact Player of the Year for the Pogue Agency in 2020. He earned number three rookie agency in the Pogue Master Agency. And having been in, all having been in AO for, for less than, than half of, of 2020. So he was able to reach all those goals, you know, kind of behind the ball in terms of time. So let's just have a conversation with Gil, hear more about that transformation that he's gone through as he navigated this great model um, following a 30 plus year career in corporate America. So uh, are you out there, Gil? I haven't looked to see if you've unveiled yourself. Welcome, welcome. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks. How are you? Awesome, awesome. So let's let's start. Um, you know, I kind of covered a lot of, uh, of of your accolades since you've been here, um, but let's kind of go back to the beginning. Do you remember what you were seeking when you, you ran into my symmetry ad on ZipRecruiter, I believe? What was it about you know, that our model that kind of intrigued you and, and made you decide to, to pick up the phone or, or fill out that application? Yeah, yeah. Um, first of all, let me just say um, thank you for that warm introduction. And uh, just want to let everyone know that I am, of course, direct to Eileen Balmer in the uh, Jacob Pogue, Marshall Whalen hierarchy. I'm very, very happy to be so. And to answer your question, you know, I, I was um, looking for something different. I knew that. Um, I knew that from where I'd, where I'd come from, I was looking for a different opportunity, something that would, uh, you know, check some different boxes than what I'd been doing. Um, and I was pretty selective, um, but uh, the, the symmetry model was just extraordinarily intriguing to me when I first came across it. Uh, there are a lot of things about it that I'd never seen before. Um, was completely unfamiliar with, with the whole model, but there were things about it uh, that, you know, things for, for instance, like the, um, the advance, uh, you know, from where I'd been, I, I just couldn't imagine that that was a real thing where you would uh, close a deal for hundred dollars. It'd be annualized and you'd be getting a commission either at that month, when I came in, it was 60 now it's 70 on that. And, and, Carriers would advance that um, in advance of themselves making money. Uh, that to me uh, was was so foreign. I, I had um, never come across that uh, previous, you know, to my experience here. I, I've been a part of you know creating comp plans and you know both as a, as a sales rep before, but also you know designing comp plans. And these things were were never considerations. I mean, you never saw a model that that, that lived like that. So. That to me was was interesting, and I, I kind of came to a conclusion that that's very favorable to to a sales agent, and so that um, that was that was a big part of it. Thinking, okay, if, if if this is how it runs, and I know that's how they do it, then um, the fact that I don't understand it or haven't been exposed to it doesn't mean it's not real, because I came my background is in is in tech, so I, I you know the way we pay salespeople in in high tech is very different, and and there's, there's these advances don't happen, so I was very intrigued by that. And that was was mostly the, the cornerstone of, uh, of of when I came across that I was like I need to I need to give this a try. Awesome, awesome, yeah. Um, I think a lot of us kind of forget what what a great um, what a great business this is, where they're going to pay you, you know, before the insurance company even makes any money. So that's a, that's a great um, great point. You know, coming from high level corporate positions. You know, symmetry must have felt real different to you. You know, what are some of the the early revelations that you had about you know your mindset and, and where things might have to change a little bit from what you were accustomed to, you know, having when you were in corporate America? Yeah, yeah. Well, for starters, I, I was super impressed by the founders. 
and, and still still am. Uh, everyone I've met um, has it's just been you know, really impressive um, based on how the culture that's been developed here and the, um, the way it gets executed. But for what I was going through when I was first coming on, uh, you, know, you know, carrying a bag was, uh, was, was a little different. I, you know, I've always been kind of a career sales guy, um, came up through the ranks, you know, as, as a sales guy. So I was never afraid of, of selling per se. The idea of commission only didn't concern me, um, but I just hadn't done it for a while, um, for a long while. And so I, I, there was some trepidation about, you know, am I, am I going to be um, you know, good at this? Uh, is this going to be fun for me? And, and, and uh, the idea of it being fun you know, went away pretty fast because I love that part of it. I think that is the best part of what we get to do is uh, going into homes or being, being on a Zoom. I mean, that is by far the, the, the most fun I have in this job, in this role, because uh, I, I, it's just really, really a fun, a fun you know, uh, part of the, of the business for me. Um, so I've always, always loved that. But, um, but I had to learn, learn this system, learn, learn how we do it here, because I, I knew nothing about insurance. I mean, literally nothing. And uh, so that that was that was an adjustment, but I it was uh, it was fun, and it, yeah, I think the, the the more salient undercurrent to all that was the metrics for success um, real different than, than what I was used to. I remember when uh, early on we, we were talking about how um, we measured success by how many families we protected, and I remember thinking, you know, wow, that that's a that's a real different metric than than what I was used to, um, but it's great. It's great, and and uh, and that gets underscored, you know, all the time. So it was, it was awesome, but that was that was different for me, for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, what were tell us a little bit about some of your initial struggles that you encountered when you were in the field? You know, you said that it'd been a while since you've been kind of beating the pavement, if you will. Obviously, we don't have to do that here. But what were some of the things that just kind of you know, kind of put set you aback and went, oh my goodness. Um, some of those struggles that you first encountered. Yeah, well, you know, uh, I, uh, you know, taking taking an app, taking a paper app early on, uh, was was uh, fascinating for me. I, um, I I had spent my most of the the last part of my thirty year career having you know um, admin support for a lot of things, so I, I really wasn't in the mode of of actually sitting down with a customer and taking a paper app, and I remember. Um, you know, a deal with, with Transamerica that I lost because of a paper app that I absolutely butchered, and uh, I'm over it now, barely. But um, but it you know that but I just knew that it was because of me, and and so that was that was all all new to me. Um, I, I you know loved being in the field, of course, and, and loved interacting, but but the, some of that stuff w- was hard for me early on. But you know, once you get to the point where you're taking electronic apps, those are essentially idiot proof. Thank goodness, and and you know, that, that helped. And so I was able to, um, to make those adjustments, but, uh, you know, early on, it was just, you know, um, dialing was, um, you know, not, not awesome. It, you know, it's, uh, but it became easier and it becomes easier. And it's, you know, today it's, it's, it's actually, it's actually very easy, but it's just, it's getting into a mindset that says, this is what I'm going to do. This, these are my goals. It's what I'm after. And so, um, but yeah, the, early on, you know, definitely kind of fumbling around, uh, you were in, instrumental in so much of that and helping me, um, and um, so we got through it. Yeah, yeah, yes, we did. Um, so are you, um, as an agency owner here, I'm sure that your mentoring style, you know, I think Casey made reference to it earlier. You know, we are, we are leading a volunteer army here. So I got to imagine that, that your management style has to be quite a departure from what you were used to in, in the corporate world. Um, what are some of the ways where you had to kind of change your approach in, in the way that you, you handled your, you know, the agents on your team as opposed to, to how you may have handled direct reports, you know, in the past? Yeah, yeah that's, that's, a, that's an excellent question. And, and it's a big question. And there's a, there's a lot of moving parts to that. Uh, I could, I could you know, probably write a book on that in terms, because there's just so many things that are, that are different. Um, but one thing I can tell you about the symmetry model is it, it's just it's just so much better and so much more effective. Um, and because in, in in my past when I when I worked with, with direct reports or organizations, um, we really didn't get the opportunity to to really dive in or concern ourselves with with individuals. You, you, when you are are, um, are are moving up the ranks in the company or even at the top of the company, you essentially become nothing more than just a revenue animal. 
And it's about just driving a number. And, and that's the objective. And, and, and people and individuals are, are parts that can be interchanged to achieve those objectives. And I'm sure many people that are on this call that have you know, been a part of corporations and been a, in, in the life of, of, of reorgs and, and realignments and, and things that get moved around. I mean, I've, I've seen all that and, and been a part of that on, 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 from one spectrum to the other. Uh, and and it's, it's, it's nauseating. <laughs> It's nauseating to, to be a part of a downsizing and, and watch people leave that you don't want to leave, that are, are really good people uh, who, who, um, who you like and, and, and to tell them that they're going to get X amount of weeks of compensation and that they're, and that they're out. Um, that sort of thing was just, it's, just, it's, it's hard, but, but, but that's, that's the way the culture is created. Here, it's nothing like that. And, and so you know, we, we get to operate on an entirely different level. I, and I remember occasions where the organization I, I, was, I was leading was going to expand for, for some reason, either because of a, a group was reorging in or something was happening. And I remember thinking about how I, I always wanted to make sure that the people that are coming into the organization have a different experience and, and, and enjoy what happens here. And, and even though I knew that there'd probably be a reorg coming up in the next six months again, and we, we, it'd be realigned. But I remember having times where I thought, you know, I really want this to, to, to be positive for these people. And then realizing that that you know, none of that ever really gets to happen to that extent because you're, you're chasing a number, you're chasing an objective. And um, when that either is, is achieved or not, that affects what happens. And, and here, here we don't get to do that. Here I can actually say, look, I want people to have a great experience in the organization. I can influence that. Or in the past, I, I haven't been able to. I wanted to, but I haven't been able to because here we get that opportunity to really engage people where they're where, where they're at and what what what's important to them. Um, there there are people here that want to be part time, and that's perfect for them. I mean, there's no right or wrong. There are people in the organization right now that you know they they have a brick and mortar insurance business in downtown San Francisco, and they want to engage symmetry for those occasional times that they have a person who is a non PNC client who's looking for life insurance and they want to engage people, that's perfect for them. That's a, and then there's people that are, that are hard charging and want to be AOs, that's perfect for them. So it, it's, it's really fun to be able to be in an environment where we can plug into whatever drives an individual. And it's not what's important to me or it's important to the organization that I'm, that I'm serving or working for. It's, it's an entirely different style. Um, and you get, to, you get to just care about people. You know, just just be real with them and authentic. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's it's very awesome. different. Absolutely. Is there anything that you miss about being in those corporate roles? You know, would you ever return? Uh, no, no. I mean, I, there, there's really there's there's literally nothing nothing that I miss uh, from, from corporate America. And I it's it's even as I say that I, I think wow that's I mean it's quite a departure because I I love what I've done, but. Uh, no, there, there isn't. And, um, you know, what I, what I leave, no, no, this, this is it. I mean, I, I cannot imagine a scenario where I would, would leave, leave symmetry. Well, it, it, I would leave symmetry to play third base for the Giants. That, that I would do. Uh, but I'm starting to think that that window's starting to close. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 but uh, you got I'm an sorry? arm, right? You got no, an I'm arm. Not, huh? I'm not really. <laughs> um, what are some of the mindset changes? That, that you've had to make. I know since I came to Symmetry, you know, the, the consistent personal growth piece it was completely different than what I've had experienced in, in the past in my career. Um, are there some mindset changes that you've had to go through personally uh, since you joined Symmetry? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and it's, it's really coming to a point where realizing that it, it, it's not about me or my number or what's going to drive an organization and instead it's about the people the people that are coming into the agency it's it's about them what matters to them is what's paramount and i'm, I'm the only thing i get to do is i get to have a front row seat at what they want to accomplish and i just can't tell you how rewarding that is how much fun that is um it's a privilege uh, and so that, and that, that is a shift because before it was, I was always accustomed to just chasing a number or chasing an objective, um, chasing a growth number or target something. And here it's, it's just about 
let, let's let's understand what's important to you. Where where are you now, and where do you want to go, and how can I help you get there? What are those things that I can do to, to help to help drive that? And as long as I know that, and I can I get to work with you um, shoulder to shoulder and and watch it happen. And so and, and I got to tell you, watching people in the organization hit their goals, hit their objectives, you know, state their targets, and then do it. I mean, it is just awesome. It is just awesome to watch because you're, you're watching them develop in such a way. And I've, I've got you know, story after story of it. I mean, so many dear people in my organization and, and just watching them, uh, you know, just develop and grow. Um, I mean, yesterday, Cooper Gardner had an incredible day in the field and it was so exciting to see that. And the team celebrated because it was just really fun. So those things are great and uh, really great. That's, that's awesome. Um, do you have any advice for, for anyone out there that may be also recovering from, you know, rampant corporate America? <laughs> um, you know, coming into this brand new, what advice would you give them um, to, to, to find success here and, and to, to kind of let go of, of the corporate norms that, that they've been accustomed to? Because we're all kind of put Americans in general, you go to school, you go to college, you go get a corporate job. That's just the way, at least people in our, you know, the millennials may be different, but our, our age group for sure, that was the expectation. And this is a departure. Yeah. 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 Great question. I think that, that what I would say is, is this model is different. But that doesn't mean that uh, it, it's it's in any way flawed or or uh, inadequate. In fact, the contrary. And and I think people struggle with that. You you come in here and you go, well, yeah, I, I would do it this way, and I do that this way, and 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 I I fell into some of that. I, I kind of had that that objective, it, or at least that that those optics. It was really helpful for me because early on, I heard John Ziller say how, how he came in and he just wanted to change everything, and he you know he just wanted to change everything, and then. Later, he would laugh at himself and say, you know what, I realized I, I really knew nothing, but I, but I was just, you know, it just was so different. What he was essentially saying was this was a, a, such a different environment for me. I, I went through a version of the same thing. And because of because John's counsel, when he said that, I was like, okay, okay, that makes sense to me. I'm just, I'm just not going to try, try to reinvent the wheel, so to speak, because the, the, the system that's here and, and the culture that's here, it's in place. We just got to follow it. So what I would say is, um, even though it does look different, um, the longer you hang on to those norms that you're used to, you're just delaying your own development and you're delaying your organization. And I did that. Um, it took me two years to become an AO. Didn't need to. We just heard Jamie knock it out uh, just a few minutes ago, talk about how she did it in a year. That's awesome. And that, and that is about right. I mean, that, that can happen. If that's, if that's your goal and that's your objective, then that's what it needs to be. I, I think that I, I delayed a little bit. Um, I was still looking at other opportunities when I first started and, and, and I, and that's on me. I mean, I, uh, the, but the fact that it took me two years, I, I think is, is, um, is not the way it should be. I think people can do it faster if they choose to, you don't have to, but if you choose to, then, then you certainly can. Um, but, but I would just tell people, you know, my, my advice would be, you know, just don't give up. Um, don't, don't give up. Um, you're, you're going to go through things. You're going to develop. There, there's a, there's a group of people in your upline that uh, want to help you, that, that, that care about you, that have been through the things that you're going through. Um, when, when you experience being porched or being zorched or whatever's going on in the field, there are those in your organization that have been through that and, and can talk you through that because you know, it, it's just part of, part of the business and part of the, the way we develop. But, um, but I guess the last thing I would say is, um, is don't, don't quit. I mean, do not quit. Uh, and the reason for I, I say that is because, because if you do, this, this opportunity will, will haunt you. And, and that's not a symmetry thing. Uh, you, you'll be haunted by the fact that, that you will ask yourself, what would have happened if I had given my all to symmetry? If I'd really given my all to symmetry, what would have happened and then following that is the realization that you, you really didn't give it your all um, because if you had uh, you, you'd be in a different place and so that's why i can tell you don't 
quit because that question will gnaw at you um, about the opportunity that you could have missed. We just heard, you know, Casey talked about what's, what's coming up in the next year and a half to two years, uh, if not sooner. Um, there, this is the right time to be here. This, this is the right time to engage this company. Whether, whether you're just now going through licensing and this is your first call or whether you're trying to get up to 120, all of us, I mean, this is the right place to be at the right time. And so you just have to dig in, uh, set yourself aside a little bit, uh, laugh at yourself a little bit, be candid with your upline, realize that they care about you, uh, and really do, um, and realize that you are sitting on a powder keg, and that this is an unbelievable journey, and that you will meet some of the greatest people um, ever. Uh, I, I, I won't start naming names because I can, I can go all day, um, but you know, between my upline and my downline, I, I got some, some of the most treasured people that I, I, that I can, I can even imagine. Uh, it's awesome. It's awesome. So don't, uh, don't quit. Stay with it. That's awesome. I couldn't have wrapped this conversation up any better than that. Um, I guess I'll throw it back to, to Casey and just say, you know, thank you, Gil. Um, I am so honored to, to be your business partner and so glad that you're on the team and, uh, you know, you're going to be at the top of this company before long. Thank you. Get away, Casey. Thank both of you guys. Excellent call. I've got a lot of great comments, uh, comments in the feed there and some text too saying bang up call today, guys. So I appreciate you guys pouring into everyone. Um, let's go out and, uh, and have another killer week together. And we'll be uh, back same time, same place next week. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you, Gil. Y'all are killing it. Keep it up. Thank you. See you guys. Hey guys. Have a good one. Thank you.